In this video we're going to continue on with global objects and we're going to look at the date object. And I think you get an idea what that does. But before we do that, I want to introduce a new concept. And that is another way to create objects. And that involves using the new keyword. And basically what that does is it allows us to copy an existing object and use it. And in this case, we're going to copy the date object. That's the object that we're going to copy. And then we get to go ahead and use its methods and properties like we've been doing in previous videos. So again, it all starts with the new keyword. Then you have to put the object that you want to copy. It's actually called the reference object. And all you're basically doing is telling JavaScript, hey, I want to copy this object. Give me a copy of this. The actual lingo they like to use is called a instance. We're creating an instance of this date object. But it's really just a copy. That's the simple way to think of it. And then you have to put in these open parentheses. This is called the constructor. And basically, it does what a constructor does in real life. It builds something. So it's going to build a copy of the date global object for us. And of course, we're assigning the name to day date. And then we get to go ahead and use our own copy of the date object. And there's some more nuances to this, and we'll talk about this in future videos. So now that we've got our date object, and we're calling it today date, but you could call it anything you want, we're just going to go ahead and write it out. And you're going to see we already get some output without even having to use any method. So let's go ahead and run this. And you can see we get all of this output Saturday, March 28th. We get the year, we get the time, and even the time zone. Now, what I want to point out is this will be specific to your system. So if you're living in another country or another time zone, it will pull it from the system clock on your computer. And so like I said, this may be different for you. You may be on a different time zone other than the Eastern Standard Time Zone. So again, the date object pulls the current date and time from whatever your system clock is set at. Okay, and you know what? I didn't want to close that out. Let's go ahead and run that again. Now, let's say you don't like this long format here. You want this to look a little bit more readable because this is not in a string format. So let's say we want to convert this to a string format. There's actually a method that the date object provides to do that, and then we'll compare the two. So let's go ahead and just minimize this for now. And we'll go back to our code, and I'll just copy and paste in here. So we're going to create a new variable called useString, and I think you get an idea what that means. We're going to specify our object, and like I said, we can go ahead, and since this is a date object, like I said, this is our copy of the date object, we can go ahead and use all the methods. And one method that is provided is called toDateString. And all this is going to do is convert that output that we just saw to a more readable string. And of course, here we need to write out this variable. So let's just go ahead and copy and paste that in there. And we'll go ahead and run this now. And you can see this is a little bit more readable. This is now provided in a string format. And take a look at the difference. You can see this is actually a string as opposed to the raw output that we get. So let's go ahead and close this out. And let's go back to our code. And we're going to go ahead and get rid of this line now. And I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste a new line in here. So we're going to use this get year method. And there is actually an opposite to this called the set method. And we'll talk about the set method in a second. And the get just gets something that's already out there. We are just receiving what is already out there. With the set method, we actually define the values that we want. And I'll show you that in a second. But first, let's go ahead and run this. And obviously, we need to go ahead and put the today date object in here that we're going to go ahead and write out. And we're just going to get the year. So let's go ahead and run this. And you'll notice that the output's going to look very similar to when we wrote it out earlier. And so it basically goes ahead and writes out everything, including the year. <laughs> so again, that looks pretty similar to what we did earlier. But what we want to try to do is pass in a different year. And so let's put in uh, 17 in here, and we'll see what happens. And we'll go ahead and run this again. And nothing happened, and that's what I expected. Because remember, get methods only receive what's out there. So it'll only take what's currently available in our system clock. So that's why it did not alter the year. That's where we have to use the set method. So all we have to do here is switch this to set year, 
And now if we run this, you'll see that the year actually does change. And there you see we get 1917. Now if you wanted 2017, we actually have to type the whole thing out. And let's go ahead and run this. And there you can see we get 2017. Okay, that's going to do it for this video. Now in the next video, we're really going to start getting into JavaScript. We are going to take our first look at the DOM, otherwise known as the Document Object Model. Probably the most important thing to understanding JavaScript.